I'd like to call the Garden Grove City Council meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call roll? Councilmember Broadwater? Here. Councilmember Doe? Here. Councilmember Wynn? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Jones? Here. Mayor Dalton? Here. Okay, we have two uh, closed session items. Conference with labor negotiators uh, pursuing a government code section 54957.6. And conference with legal counsel pending litigation, uh, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9, subsection A. I'd like to um, see if there's anyone here that uh, would like to speak at oral communications for either of these items. <coughs> Seeing none, I'll close oral communications and we'll recess to a closed session for those items. <coughs> We'll now call the meeting for the Garden Grove Housing Authority. Madam Clerk, could you please take roll? Commissioner Dalton? Here. Commissioner Doe? Here. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Navarez? Here. Commissioner O'Connor? Here. Vice Chair Broadwater? Here. Chair Wynn? Here. We now go to oral communications. Do we have any cards for the oral communication? Okay, hearing none. We'll go to commissioner comments. Any comments from commissioners? Hearing none, we'll go to the number two item, consent items. Move the issue. I have to second. Second. Call for a vote. Motion received, seven yes votes. We have no public hearings on calendar and no items for consideration. Ever, hmm. Is that different from the commissioner comments? Matters from commissioners and directors? Yeah, just so you know, that we inserted that commissioner comments to come after public comments. Oh, so I see. So if there's no public comments, then we usually we wouldn't have the commissioner comments. Okay. We have uh, no matters from commissioners and directors. So now we'll call for the adjournment of the Housing Authority. The next meeting will be Tuesday, September 28th at 6.30 p.m. in the council chamber.
Yeah, I'd like to call a Garden Grove City Council meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call roll? <clears throat> Council Member Broadwater? Here. Council Member Doe? Here. Council Member Wynn? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Jones? Here. Mayor Dalton? Here. Okay, we'll have the invocation by Keith Jones, Public Works Director, and the Pledge of Allegiance by Mayor Pro Tem uh, Jones. No relation. Okay, at this time I'll open all communications for the council and the agency and uh, the sanitary. Oh, did I miss something? Yeah, we're going to show the uh, water conservation video. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's yeah. right. We didn't have it listed down here. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we'll Susan show Emery. the water conservation yeah. video. Susan Emery, would you like to introduce this item for us? Yes, thank you, Mr. City Manager. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. As you know, last January, the City Council approved a landscape ordinance to address the issue of reduced water availability for landscaping in yards and gardens. Water is becoming an increasingly scarce and expensive resource here in Southern California. Last Thursday night, the Community Development Department hosted an evening of ideas at the GEM Theater to bring together residents who are interested in drought-tolerant landscaping ideas and a variety of speakers with innovative landscaping concepts. Included among the speakers were landscape architects, experts in irrigation, the Tree of Life Nursery, the city's own Buster Yours, who's an expert on butterfly gardens, and a local homeowner who has beautifully recreated her yard using California native plants. One of the highlights of the evening was the world premiere of a movie produced by the planning department and our own Channel 3. Channel 3's intern rep reporter, Steve Shifo, attended the premiere of the movie, One Small Dog, One Big Quest, and he has filed this report. This is Mickey, and she's on a quest for her dream garden. That's it. This yard needs a makeover. Less grass and more trees and plants that take less water. Mickey is looking for a water-smart garden filled with beautiful plants that don't need a lot of maintenance. She shared the spotlight last Thursday with a line of speakers, including Annette and John Vivanti, whose garden was featured in Mickey's silver screen debut. To them, trading a traditional lawn for California native plants is a great decision. They're beautiful just by themselves, the way they look, you know, even with kind of going through their browns and yellows as they, they lose their color. It's still just really attractive, so I'm just mesmerized by it. Native plants can save you money because they don't need to be watered as much. The rain from their natural habitat is enough to keep them healthy and vibrant. Reducing water costs is one reason why Garden Grove resident Tom Furch made the switch to a water-smart garden. So last December, I converted a 1,000 square feet of my yard into uh, drought-tolerant drip irrigation. Audience member Sandy Flores hadn't considered a water-efficient garden before, but after last Thursday, she was inspired to give it a try. It was amazing. The lineup of speakers, I felt like I was at a UCLA campus. Well, it looks like our star can rest easy tonight. Her big premiere went well, and there are lots of great ideas about water smart gardens. This is Steve Schifo reporting. See the whole video, if you like, on uh, the city's webpage. It's just, um, I think a link has been posted to that. It's about an eight minute video. Okay, staff, do you have any questions for staff? Okay, thank you. A quick question, if you yes, don't mind. Yes, go ahead. How much would it cost to convert, that um, gentleman said, 1,000 square feet of uh, lawn? You know, I'm not sure. You, you might want to talk to the Vivantes, the people who actually converted their yard, but I know she mentioned to me, except for a few plants that she hand waters on occasion, they really don't water their yard anymore. So you're going to save a lot of money. It may cost some up front for all the new plants, um, and you have to let the grass go. But then after the plants are in, I know they cut back every few months dramatically, and within three or four months, the yard is very full and lush again and very, very little on water. So. 
Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Does it require any kind of uh, re-engineering of the soil or anything like that? Well, it, at the we had a speaker there who was, um, we had two, one who did a drip irrigation system that could be all installed below the soil, so that's, you know, one option. Um, some people have used California native plants, and that's why we had Tree of Life Nursery, because that's their specialty. Other people prefer Mediterranean plants, which are not native to California, but also don't need a lot of water, because it's more of a semi-arid kind of climate and they may be using the drip irrig irrigation system, so that would be something you might have to include. And they also had an expert on organic fertilizer because that, I guess, ha plays a role in reduced water uh, capacity as well. Do we have contact information for all of uh -huh. these contacts? I, and if uh, I can send all those to the council, a lineup of all the speakers and their contact information. Is that information available online as well? Or people, if they um, no, but we can make that. We could attach that or create some sort of an attachment um, on the internet page for that. Yeah, please, yeah. that would be, would be good. I will look it up myself too. Be happy thank, to do thank that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, um, oh, we had two closed session items prior to the council meeting, and no reportable action taken. Okay, now I'll open our communications for the council agency and the sanitary district. Uh, Charles Dang. Honorable Mayor, uh, esteemed members of the council, uh, I'm Charles Dang. Uh, I live on Lita Lane. Uh, a map is being distributed to you um, showing uh, the water park project uh, as well as uh, the location of uh, you know, my home. Uh, my home is adjacent to the uh, water park project. Uh, Lita Lane is on the uh, north side of the project. I'm here to talk to you about um, the proposed use of our road, uh, Lita Lane, as an emergency access, uh, fire access for the project. Uh, I represent uh, several other homeowners on Lita Lane as well, and we are in uh, strong protest uh, against uh, this uh, proposal uh, to use our road. Um, we were uh, uh, informed of this uh, use of our road only, I think, last week or the week before that in um, a neighborhood meeting uh, presented by the, uh, the water park uh, developers. And uh, to our surprise, if you see in the page behind, uh, sorry, some of you may not have that. To our surprise, um, we see uh, at the top it says gated emergency access. So not only is our road, which is a dead end, uh, a cul-de-sac, uh, not only is our uh, road uh, being used as an access, but uh, we have a gate uh, as, as well, uh, something that has not been there in the past. Um, so I'm here to um, ask uh, the city council to uh, weigh in on this uh, issue uh, before it becomes a problem. Um, I know that there is a process uh, about which to go, uh, to go uh, through this, to voice our protest. There are meetings and planning commission meetings uh, coming up, but uh, without um, uh, authoritative uh, power from the council members or from the, uh, the city manager, um, I believe uh, we will be uh, faced with a problem here. And so I ask uh, for uh, the uh, city council to uh, consider our uh, request, which is to find a solution, find a way uh, around using our road, our private road, as um, uh, emergency uh, fire access to the project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Matt, we'll have someone get back to him. And we'll, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Robert Winters. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council members. Uh, I recently, about a year ago, moved back down to Garden Grove uh, with my parents at 9592 Stamford Avenue. Uh, there is a single family residence that's been built at 9722. I think you guys may be aware of that. I went to the city yesterday and no one there had any idea what I was talking about and couldn't put, pull it up on the computers. Then one guy came out with only the plans for the property and I wasn't there to 
find out about the plans. I wanted to know what the use was going to be. Because four years ago, when that home was transferred from a long-term owner to another gentleman for a period of four months, during that four months for about 40 days, and I was at the residence at that time, they had 33 people living in that home. And I came to the city, somebody made a call, and they moved them out of there the next day. Okay? Uh, since the last few months, I've been recovering from an illness that I've been battling cancer. And I feel a lot better, so I've been doing a lot of walking around to a lot, and talking with a lot of residents around there. Uh, and also with several of the workers at the property, because I speak Spanish fluently. I've been told that this thing that happened four years ago with the people living there was a trial balloon. And now this owner of this home is planning on doing the same thing with this property and having an outside administrator coordinate and collect monies from these elderly residents. If you've been down that street, and uh, I know some of you have, there's not only the main structure or main home, which is about 18,000 square feet, I don't know how large it is. There's two other buildings in the back that aren't just garages, there's also housing quarters back there. I thought the homes on Stanford Avenue were single family residences, first of all. Uh, my issue in talking to the mainly elderly and long-time residents of Stanford Avenue is if the city is allowing this to happen or it does happen, what impact is there going to be on housing values, street, I mean parking? I mean, if you have 25 to 35 residents in there, and I've also been told by someone else at the property that it was going to be his extended family living in the residence. I can't believe anybody has 35 people that's extended family. Uh, I don't know if this has been some type of scam that this guy's pulled or what's going on, but I think that the city needs to go back out immediately and take a really hard look at what this project is really all about. Because there's numerous, I don't mean a few, numerous 10, 11, 12 residents in that area they're elderly people. They're going bananas over this. They're like, what is going on here? So, and if I can't get answers when I go to the city yesterday, I have to come here tonight and spend my time and waste your time when this is something that should have been more well vetted and more due diligence done on this property. And I know who the property owner is. We all know who he is and what he's built in Garden Grove. So I'm just putting it out there for the public and everybody to know that once you move in 35 elderly people, you're going to have a heck of a time getting them out of there. And that's not what's needed in, especially on Stanford Avenue and in that area. So that's all I've got to say. My number's on the card. You know where I live. And uh, somebody give me a call and give me a reasonable explanation of this. Because I'm going to continue to thoroughly investigate the owner and everything that's going on with that property. Thank you. Okay, Peter Katz. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I want to thank the majority of the City Council for attending the grand opening of the Main Street Farmers Market on Sunday, August 15th. The Farmers Market runs every Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Main Street between Acacia Boulevard and Garden Grove Boulevard. And it is a much improved market with 11 local farmers selling fruits and produce at reasonable prices. The brains of the city might be here at City Hall its pocketbook might be on Harbor Boulevard in International West, but the heart and soul of this city or any city is its main street. Prior to the 1600s, residents and businesses congregated in one of two places, around the fort or castle for protection or around the church for comfort and salvation. It was the invention of the harness that allowed horses to pull greater loads thereby allowing businesses to expand around a market square. A town square became the center of commerce because it allowed a greater turning radius for wagons and horses pulling increasingly larger loads. 
With the coming of the automobile, the square was stretched into a main drag or main street, if you will. This enabled governments to organize and regulate property and business and create a tax system. Now the internet crossroad is changing this landscape once again. If main streets are to survive, a new formula must evolve. We are in troubled times. Main Street in Garden Grove has eight businesses where one can dine or grab a bite to eat. Food is a tough business to be in. Most live on the edge. Restaurant spending is discretionary. Patronage is declining. It is the most prolonged drop in 22 years in the restaurant business. There are 73,800 restaurants in the state of California. This is a loss of nearly 1,800 from just one year ago. The bottom line is that we must find new ways to stimulate commerce. The farmer's market, the car, the car show, the high school reunion on Saturday, October 23rd, or any other event generates foot traffic, which equates to patronage. This Thursday evening, the Village Green is hosting the Mariachi Divas concert in conjunction with the 15th anniversary celebration of the Friday Night Car Show. September brings Shakespeare's King Lear to the amphitheater. The Gem Theater features Damn Yankees in October, and the tree lighting is in December. The Village Green also hosts the Arab Festival following Ramadan. So remember, eat, shop, and entertain right here on Main Street in Garden Grove. We need your business. Thank you. Hey, thank you. I'm going to close our communications at this time. Any members have any comments? Okay, if not, then we'll uh, go ahead. I'd like to have some. I'm not quite sure what Mr. Uh, Winters was talking about. I, mean, I haven't been down in Stanford, but, uh, yeah, I'd like to see something come back to me telling me what's going on. Okay. Okay, um, we'll recess the council and go to the agency. Member Dalton? Here. Member Doe? Here. Member Jones? Here. Vice Chair Wynn? Here. Chair Broadwater? Here. Okay, we've already had public comments. Consent items, we have one. We ask that you uh, entertain a motion unless a discussion is requested by a member. Hearing none, call for the vote. Get a motion first here, I guess. Move it. Second. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Item six, items for consideration. Mr. Chair, you have a purchase and sale agreement for property on Harbor Boulevard for uh, acquisition, and Greg Blodgett is here to give a staff report on this item. Mr. Chairman, members of the agency board, tonight we have for your consideration a purchase and sale agreement for 12272 and 12292 Harbor Boulevard. Uh, this is an agreement between the agency and Richard Kill. Uh, this property is generally located on the east side of Harbor, just north of Twin Tree Avenue, in the International West Hotel District. Uh, this site has been identified as a key hotel site for the agency, and we have had um, a lot of activity with hotel developers looking at the site. Uh, the property is approximately 1.5 acres, and the general terms and conditions of this purchase agreement are as follows. The total purchase price is $5 million, and this is consistent with the appraised value of the property. Uh, we'll have an initial deposit of $150,000, which is due upon opening of escrow, and the final deposit of $2.35 million. And the close of escrow is estimated October 1st, 2010, uh, which time the balance of the purchase price will be paid. And actually the balance of the purchase price is uh, going to be financed by the owner over 21 months at a 6.5% interest rate. Uh, the property will be purchased with agency available funds. Um, at this time, staff recommends the agency approve the purchase and sale agreement and authorize the agency director to execute the agreement and authorize the uh, secretary to accept the grant deed and also authorize the finance director to draw a warrant uh, of the $2.5 million. Uh, that concludes my staff report. Any questions for staff? Uh, yes, I do. 
Um, there is a, um, a small lot um, just north of this proposed site, Mr. Blodgett. Um, does the city own that lot already? Uh, correct. We own two of the adjacent parcels, um, which were purchased uh, over the last two years, including the kill parcel. Uh, next to the kill parcel is the Bowen property and then the Lynn property, which the agency now controls. So with the purchase of the proposed site, then that would make uh, the city owner of um, basically one contiguous lot. Yes, exactly. What would be the approximate uh, square footage of, of the, the resulting uh, lot? The ultimate size of the parcel will be 3.5 acres. So this parcel is just approximately three acres, uh, including if we acquire this property, it will be three acres. Would that be sufficient um, for a hotel? Uh, another 0.5 acres, which is the adjacent southern property, would be the um, last acquisition. And um, are we going to be able to purchase that last? Uh, yes, that would be the next acquisition. Is, it, is that going to happen soon? Do you know? It? Do we know? Uh, we've talked to the owner, so we're, we've had some discussions. Um, but since we don't have a hotel at this point, we haven't been pushing the issue. But we will definitely continue discussions with the owner. It just seems like three acres is is kind of limited in size. I'm just trying to. Gauge right. as far as what type of hotel you think would fit in, in such a small area? Uh, fortunately, as Mr. Blodgett mentioned, there is considerable interest from hotel folks for this property. Um, it would be a tight fit. We'd, I think all the proposals do include a parking structure. But our first preference is to attract a convention hotel, a business hotel that has meeting space, restaurants, and uh, would require a parking structure due to the uh, constraint of the, of the size of this parcel, though. Just for comparison, the Sheraton across the street, what is the square footage of, of their lot? Oh, it's top of my head. Approximately three acres. It's only about three acres? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Entertain a motion. Call, uh, motion. To move. We have a motion. Second. Second. Call for the vote. Motion received. Five yes votes. Any matters from agency members? Hearing none, I would like to uh, at least uh, uh, mention the uh, young people here in the back of the room. We got about nine scouts in uniform. Looks like Troop One One One. Is that correct? So. Glad to have you here this evening. At this time, we will adjourn, and we will adjourn until September the 14th at 5.30 p.m. in the council chambers. Okay, we'll go to the sanitary district. Let the record show that all members are present. I believe the next item is consent items. Yes, Mr. President. You have three items, and it's recommended that these items be acted on simultaneously unless a separate discussion is requested by a member. Move the item. Second. We have motion second. Call for the vote. Motion received. Five yes votes. Okay. There are no other items. Is there any matters from board members? Okay. Hearing none, I'll adjourn this meeting until Tuesday, September 28th, 2010 at 6.30 p.m. in the council chambers. And we will resume the uh, reconvene the council. First item is a consent calendar, and it's recommended that items 6A through 6G be acted on simultaneously unless a separate discussion or action is requested by a council member. Move the issue. Second. A motion, a second. Call for the vote. <coughs> motion received, five yes votes. Public hearing, 7A. 7A, your first public hearing is to consider the allocation of fiscal year 2010-11 state supplemental law enforcement services funds for the police department equipment purchases. And here comes Captain, nope, Allison, Courtney Allison, to give a staff report on this. Good evening. Mayor Dalton and members of the City Council, tonight the Police Department is here to request that you approve its proposed Supplemental Law Enforcement Services Fund budget for fiscal year 2010-11.
SLEP funding is intended to assist local agencies by providing additional resources for frontline law enforcement programs and is not intended to supplant current funding. In September 2009, Council approved SLEF expenditures for the Department's automated report writing system and in-car video camera systems. The report writing project recently completed the RFP process and the IVS in-car video system project is now in the RFP process. Both projects should begin implementation before the end of the year. This year, the Department plans to use SLEF funding for equipment purchases for the Police Department. The equipment will be used to enhance the investigative capabilities of the investigations unit, improve preparedness and communications in the mobile command center, and replace deteriorating furniture in the patrol briefing room. Allocating SLEF funding for the new equipment will create no burden on the city's general fund budget, and the department is asking that city council approve the funding for these future purchases. This concludes the department's SLEF funding request, and I will gladly answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Okay, hearing none, I'll open a public hearing. Is there any, anyone here that would like to speak on this matter? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. I'll move to issue. Second. I have a motion to second. Call for the vote. Motion received five yes votes. 7B. Uh, Mr. Mayor, 7B is a public hearing to consider a resolution approving the issuance of recovery zone facility bonds for the Garden Grove Galleria project. And Mr. Brown is here to give a staff report on this item. Thank you, Mr. Fertel. Mayor Dalton, members of the City Council, before you tonight is a request that the City conduct a public hearing under the Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act, or TEFRA as it's otherwise known as, in connection with the proposed issuance of recovery zone facility bonds in an amount not to exceed $4,794,000 for the purpose of financing the construction of the Garden Grove Galleria project located at 10080 Garden Grove Boulevard and to consider a resolution providing the approval under TEFRA of the issuance of the bonds to finance the project. On January 26, 2010, the City Council approved a resolution designating the redevelopment project areas within the city as the Garden Grove Recovery Zone for the purpose of issuing public and private bonds under the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. These bonds were created under the Federal Stimulus Program enacted by Congress in February of 2009 and are intended to stimulate the economy and the recovery zones through economic development and job creation. The facility bonds are issued by a governmental entity to obtain tax exempt status and proceeds are loaned to the borrower to fund the project and the governmental entity does not obligate itself in any way to repay the bonds. The city received a recovery zone facilities bond allocation in an amount of $4,794,000. The city was not able to utilize the allocation prior to August 15, 2010 and therefore voluntarily waived the full amount of the, realloc of the allocation. Large cities that voluntarily waived their allocation award will have first priority in the reallocation process for the full amount waived without competition. The city <coughs> recently approached Garden Grove Galleria LLC to gauge possible interest in the use of the full amount of the allocation to finance the project. The project as approved consists of the development of an eight-story building with 126,000 uh, square feet of commercial tenant space and 66 residential condominium units. In order for all or a portion of the bonds to qualify as tax exempt bonds, the City Council must conduct a public hearing pursuant to TEFRA that provides members of the community an opportunity to speak in favor for or against the use of tax exempt bonds for the financing of this proposed project. Prior to a TEFRA hearing, a reasonable notice must be provided to members of the community. Notice of the public hearing with respect to execution of these uh, tax exempt bonds to finance the project was published 14 days prior to tonight's TEFRA hearing. There's no financial impact to the city's general fund at this time. The city acts as a conduit issuer in these types of uh, situations. The developer would be directly responsible for debt service payments. The staff's recommendation this evening is to conduct the public hearing, adopt the resolution approving the, the city or an affiliated entity, Entering into a loan agreement at the principal amount not to exceed $4,794,000 of the city's allocation and lending the proceeds of such loan or allocation to Garden Grove Galleria LLC. And as always, we're available to answer any questions that you may have this Thank evening. you. Any questions for staff? Yeah, I have a question. Would this, uh, would this in any way make us the awarding agency? <coughs> yes. We would be the issuing agency. I did not expect that answer. 
Okay, let me ask a question then. Would that, is there any liability on the part of the city? No, uh, it would be structured that we would not have any financial liability. All the requirements and responsibility of repayment would be on the developer. And if they default, would the uh, city have any responsibility? No. Okay. If, if we are the awarding agency, we are a California municipality, you'd have to play by government rules. I mean, basically, if you take the king's shilling, you're going to play with the king's rules. It seems to me that this would put that would put that development under prevailing wage. I don't think that was the intent of this particular financing. Well, I don't doubt that. Um, we would uh, confirm that uh, prior to the developer obviously securing this financing. But the, the benefit of this financing is not a, a subsidy. It's through the federal government is providing a interest a lower interest rate, so a lower cost of financing. Well, I understand, and I'm all for it. I'm going to vote for it. But I just want the, the people involved to know what they're, they're stepping into when they take the government's money. So right. we'll confirm whether this particular financing triggers prevailing wage. Now, I'd like to see your confirmation. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I'll open a public hearing. Charles Mitchell. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council and staff. When it was originally proposed, I thought it was a marvelous idea of having the gallery open in Garden Grove. I still do. But I'm kind of reminded of the story of the farmer who lived in a small village. Now, he decided he wanted to grow crops, and he lived right next to a small creek. Well, the village thought it was a great idea for him to grow food, be more food supplied for the village itself. So he went ahead and planted his farm, and every day he'd go down to the creek and get water and take it back and water his farm. And he thought everything was fine, but the villagers kept telling him, you know, you ought to take some of that water and store it. Put it away so that you'll have it on hand if you need it. And he says, no, nah, I don't have time. Besides, it's not a problem. So time went by, and one day he went down to the creek to get the water to water his uh, farm, and lo and behold, the creek had dried up. He didn't know what he was going to do. His whole crop was going to fail. So he went to the villagers and said, can you help me out? And they said, well, we warned you that this might happen, but... Since it's going to benefit the whole village to have this uh, food supply, all right, we'll give you some of the water that we have stored to keep you going until the creek comes back. Well, this project is very similar to that in that the developer thought, well, I don't have to go out and borrow the whole amount to build this project. I'll just borrow a little at a time for each part of it that I want to get built because the money supply is there forever. Well, eventually the money supply dried up just like the creek. And all of a sudden, the developer doesn't have the money to complete the project. So now, what we're asking the city to do is to back a bond issue so that the money can be provided for this uh, contractor to go ahead and finish building the Galleria, which will benefit the city by providing taxes and revenue. And I can't help but think that uh, this is wrong. This, the developer should have done the right financing. Maybe he had bad financial advice, but he should have done all the financing ahead of time, and this gallery could have been finished by now. But I say, let's go ahead. Let's get this done. I agree that the city should go ahead with this. But I think maybe we ought to think very carefully in the future because this is stimulus money, as they say. It's free money. Well, it's not free money. It comes out of the pockets of the taxpayers 
and it will come out of the pockets of their children and their children's children. So I think we have to be careful in the future whenever any project comes up that we make part of the agreement to allow them to go with a project that they secure all the funding first and we don't end up with another uh, eggshell like we have on Garden Grove Boulevard. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak on this matter? Okay, seeing none, I'll close our, uh, the uh, public hearing. Move the item. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Call for the vote. Motion received, five yes votes. Items for consideration. Mr. Mayor, 9A is the initiation of formation of a tourist improvement district and appointment of an advisory board. And Greg Blodgett is here to give a staff report on this item. Mr. Mayor, members of council, tonight we have for your consideration a resolution declaring the city council's intention to establish a tourist improvement district, also known as TID. Garden Grove has been working with the Anaheim Orange County Visitors Bureau to develop a solution for financing collective tourist marketing efforts. And that's what this TID will do once it's approved. The TID boundary includes properties along Harbor Boulevard from the city boundary on the north uh, to Garden Grove Boulevard. Uh, as you can see in the attached map in the staff report. And the district will be divided into two separate zones. Uh, tier 1 zone will be subject to a 2.5% assessment per room night. And the Tier 2 uh, properties are south of Lamson, and this assessment will be 0.5% uh, per room night. It is estimated that TID uh, would generate approximately $2 million uh, annually and 80% of the monies generated from the TID will be used to fund the marketing efforts through the Visitors Convention Bureau. Uh, the remainder of the revenue will be used uh, directly for improvements in Garden Grove uh, within the district. Uh, just for clarification, the monies from the TID uh, are taxed on the, the visitors, not the local citizens. Uh, the first step uh, formation is the what we're doing tonight. And then we'll have additional steps will be needed, which are a public meeting, which is scheduled for the 28th of September. And then after that, we'll have a public hearing uh, on October 12th. Uh, at this time, it's recommended the city adopt the attached resolution declaring the city council's intention to establish the TID and also adopt the resolution appointing the advisory board. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Do we got to take them one at a time? You could take them both. Yeah. Okay. I'll move approval on both the resolution and the uh, advisory board. Okay, I have a motion second. for 9A1 and 9A2. Second. And a second. Call for the vote. Motion received five yes votes. 9B. Mr. Mayor, 9B is to consider a contract with BC Reynolds for uh, sign, street sign replacement. Keith Jones here to give a staff report on this item. Thank you, Mr. Fertel. This is the second phase of a five-phase project to replace and install new regulatory warning and street name signs in pre-designated areas of the Garden Grove. There's approximately 3,100 signs that need to be replaced in order to comply with the state of California's uh, municipal uniform traffic control devices. This is a requirement that uh, by the time of, by the year of 2015, that uh, street signs must meet increased retro reflectivity requirements. Uh, there were three bids received, and uh, the uh, lowest bidder at that time was BC Traffic Spe Specialists. Funding would come from the Traffic Control Relief Fund, so there's no impact to the general fund. It is therefore recommended that the award to contract with BC Rentals Incorporated doing business as BC Traffic Specialists for Phase Two street sign replacement in an amount not to exceed $341,864.08 and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement. Please, my report, be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Move the issue. Second. I have a motion and a second. Call for the vote. Motion received. Five yes votes. Uh, Mayor, to avoid uh, appearance of impropriety, I'm not going to participate in 10A or 10B because I have a business relationship with the applicant. 
Okay. Okay, ordinance is uh, presented for second reading, 10A. Mr. Mayor, 10A is ordinance number 2778, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove adopting a negative declaration and approving plan unit development number PUD 12510, changing the zoning designation from CCSP through CC43, Community Center Specific Plan Community Commercial District, to plan unit development number PUD 12510. I'd like to make a comment. Nowhere in that paragraph does it say what we're voting on. I mean, if you've got to look up the numbers and everything else, and I think that's unfair to the public. They have no clue what that item is. And sometimes I'm dubious of it myself. So anyway, let's put the item in there. Let's put, you know, maybe a hint of the street corners or the effects or something. Maybe sure it's, we got it in Garden Grove, so we know we're, we're <laughs> close. That's thing, huh? Very good. Okay, I agree with that. Uh, is that a motion or? I'll make a motion. Okay, I have a motion. Second. And a second. Uh, call for the vote. Motion received for yes votes. Okay, 10B, and I'm sure we'll have the same problem here, but it'll be rectified in the future. Yes, it will. That's uh, ordinance number 2779, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove adopting a negative declaration and adopting development agreement number DA-18110 between Brandywine Homes developer and the City of Garden Grove for a housing development at Century and Taft. Move the issue. A motion and second call for the vote. Motion received for yes votes. Okay, I think, could someone get uh, Council Member Jones? Okay, 10C. 10C is ordinance number 2780, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Garden Grove approving a revision to plan unit development number PUD 13399 to modify permitted uses to allow general and medical offices, medical clinics, and trade schools. This is an office building located on the Crystal Cathedral property on Chapman. Thank you. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Call for the vote. Motion received for yes votes. Oh. Sorry. What happened? Can, vote. Can everybody re vote again? I'm sorry. Oh, it's not working. It's not working? Okay. It's not working. Did you get it or not? We can do it. Uh, Yours uh, isn't working. I, okay, well, I, I voted yes. Okay. Motion received five yes votes. Okay, thank you. Okay, matters from uh, members. Mr. Broadwater. Uh, I think a lady that has, has passed away, and I don't know too much about when the funeral is going to be. Uh, Jan Dunn passed away. Her husband and her were involved in the city for years. Uh, he was the half owner of Dunn Taylor. Uh, Taylor Dunn those carts. Uh, yeah, the carts up there in Anaheim. And uh, he passed away quite some time ago, but Jan passed away this week. So i just like to maybe we should close the meeting in her memory tonight. And also, uh, I, I like to go back to a couple of things that were said this evening. Uh, probably should have said them at the time, but, you know, when, when the government reaches in and helps somebody, it's like we're trying to do for, the, for this, what's the name of it, Galleria? Galleria. Yeah, I'm getting old, boy. I don't do any of it anymore. But uh, Galleria, I mean, we put people to work when that happens. It makes things happen. It improves the economy. helps things go. Uh, and it's just a good thing that, that, that happens. And if this economy picks up uh, with the help of, of government, so be it. Um, you, Mr. Mitchell, you might want to take a look at a guy named Keynes. He came up with an economic theory called Keynesian economic theory. And you might take a look at it because it talks about when things are down that you pump, you prime the pump and you make it happen. And uh, it did. It worked, in, it worked in the last depression and I do believe it's working now. What's his full name? What? What's his full name? 
John Maynard Keynes. His wife's name is Linda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Miss Wynn. <clears throat> I think I won that one. Huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I have um, two events that I think the community would be very interested in uh, attending. The August 26th, Thursday, Village Green Park uh, at Stanford and Euclid. Um, they have a um, some kind of mariachi divas concert and classics on the grass car show. I think that's interesting. And also, uh, we have a Garden Grove Historic Society, and they're located um, on Euclid. They'll have a picnic in September, um, September 11th from 11 to 2. From, uh, the price is $5 per person, and the contact number is 714-530-8871. 5308871. Want to remind everyone to buy in Garden Grove. I did check out a website for buy in Garden Grove. Um, could you have staff look at um, the website? Because when I look in there, I um, couldn't find the businesses that's involved in that program. And also, if staff could look into listing all of our businesses in the city, or if we have a database we can load on there where people can find it like a directory, and that would help the businesses a lot. Um, also, congratulations to uh, Kia, and um, also one of um, the other businesses you attend, it was um, Chef, I forgot the name of it. Uh, it's a tour, if you could mention that later. It's a tour and you get to experience oh, yeah, it. Yeah, house cooking. foods, house yes. foods, yeah. Thank you. That's it. Have a good rest of the week. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Jones. Yeah, thanks. I um, just want to make a couple of comments, too, on the gallery up project issue that came up as um, sort of a common rule of thumb is the thought that um, redevelopment activities produce a seven times multiplier effect with respect to helping the economy. So every one dollar spent on a development activity produces seven dollars worth of uh, benefit to economic recovery. Um, I, I don't know exactly where they coined that, but I've heard that a number of times. And, I believe it to be true, at least at some level, that there is a strong multiplier effect on development activity, and it's a great thing. So if we can be supportive of that, that's good. Um, also, just to comment on Charles' story, I, I like the story, and I thought it was clever. I don't think it directly applies in that um, we're, not, we're not digging water out of our wells to feed a developer. This is, a, this is stimulus money that the city just has to direct. We don't have a direct financial responsibility for it. We're not writing a check ourselves. There's no, there's no financial impact to the city's bottom line on doing it, and um, and we don't have any liability on, um, or in any way guaranteeing the loan or the, the indebtedness. So, um, you know, if this can get passed through, then I would rather see it go to a project in our city that benefits our children right here in Garden Grove rather than some other city. The the stimulus has already been approved and allocated and is sitting out there. So to the extent we can grab as much of it as we can and bring it here to Garden Grove at this point, I think that makes all the sense in the world. Mr. Doe. Thank you, Mayor. And I also want to, um, to add a few comments on the uh, Galleria uh, project. Um, the, the economic crisis that we are experiencing, uh, at the core of it is really the, uh, the uh, uh, credit crisis where banks are withholding uh, lending. And so, uh, and this is a phenomenon that is affecting businesses worldwide as well as countries. So it is really difficult to uh, expect a, a business as big as the Galleria is. It really is small in the grand scheme of a macro, a macro economy that we're talking about to be able to anticipate the kind of credit crunch um, that has been happening for the last two years. As a uh, small business owner myself, much smaller in scope than the Galleria project, I can tell you I live through that firsthand every day. Um, if they continue uh, with uh, the tightening of credit where they require the credit rating to be so high and people have so much collateral before they even lend money, well, that defeats the purpose because the only people that ever need to borrow is the people who don't have those things. And so it's kind of a catch-22. Um, on another note, I, I would like, um, Mr. Fattel, if you can uh, look into um, bringing um, the people who, who 
put together the Garden Grove uh, summer camp. I think the council should really recognize that program. Um, my children have gone through that program now, I think either third, second or third summer. And they have done a wonderful job. And this is an opportunity maybe to introduce the program to the city and hopefully we can publicize it even more uh, next summer. Um, what they have is uh, they have campers uh, that are school age children. And then as they grow older, they can participate in the counselor in training, CIT program. And that's what my middle age, middle school age uh, daughter is, has been doing. And then as they get older, then they become uh, full fledged uh, counselors. And so it's a great way to introduce them to greater and greater levels of responsibility as they grow up. And, and so it's a win-win situation. You, you get uh, great daycare for younger kids, and then you get great training for middle-aged kids. Uh, and, and as they get older, then they get a uh, kind of a job training as well. Um, it's a wonderful program run by Kim Hoy, and I really want to give uh, her and uh, the, the program recognition. So if we can set it up for some time in the future, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to beat a dead horse on the Galleria, but the only thing is, you know, we're, 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 where we're at now, we can't change where we're at, but what we try to do is save the project. And without putting any liability on the city, you know, this may be a great opportunity to help save the project. Uh, nobody could predict what the economy was going to be like. There were a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, a lot of people that lost their jobs. And, you know, had people been able to predict certain things, they wouldn't have committed to things. So, you know, but we're, the main goal now is to try and complete the project at no liability to the city. A couple of things that uh, I've attended over the last week or so are really important. One of them is the Girls, Girl Scouts Gold Awards. You know, everybody thinks about the Boy Scouts when they get their eagles, but sometimes they forget about the Girl Scouts. Um, it's just as important for the girls, and, and they set goals, and they have to do a lot of things, too. Um, and we do have a large number of uh, Boy Scouts out there. How many of you have a goal of obtaining your eagle? Everybody. Okay, I can tell you right now, about 3% or 4% of you will do it, unless you really work hard and unless you really set that goal. That's about what the average is, 3 to 4%. Uh, so I wish you the best and, you know, set those goals and continue. And um, maybe uh, when you get your Eagle Scouts, I'll be there handing you a plaque from the city like I did with a couple of boys last weekend. Uh, they also had the Relay for Life, the cancer thing. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. The economy is bad. Everybody's hurting. But yet they still did have a, a sizable amount of people that were out there not only donating but were walking and were supporting the cause. And I know it's tough now because a lot of people are out of work, but uh, but these projects are still very worthwhile, and they do a lot of good. So, you know, if you're able to participate, please. Um, Dina had mentioned uh, uh, um, Mayor Pro Tem Jones and I, uh, and Dina had gone to House Foods. Uh, that's a manufacturer, mainly tofu products, um, in uh, West Garden Grove, or in the business complex area out there, and they did a humongous solar heating project. Um, and it's great because, you know, they're building up electricity, and then the meter's going around the other way when they're saving that. So it's saving a lot of money. It's doing a lot of good things, and, you know, hopefully when the economy gets better, some of the other businesses may do that too because it is a great way to heat. It's a great way to save electricity, and it's great for the environment. Um, earlier today... Uh, we had the official grand opening of the Kia dealership at Brookerson Garden Grove Boulevard. And um, one of the nice things in talking to the owner, Mr. Harden, um, he said that they had some offers in some other cities, and, and one of them, a bigger city, I'm not going to tell you which one it was, but Mickey Mouse lives there. And they had the opportunity to go there, but the difference was dealing with our staff, people making them feel wanted, making them, you know, working with them, because there's always, there's always bumps in the road that you have to smooth over. And he said that um, it, was, it was no contest. Once they started in another city and they just they couldn't get anywhere, they came and our people, Greg, and I, I don't want to start mentioning names because I'll forget half of the staff, but, I mean, it's typical. They do this day in and day out, and um, 
I think that, you know, you should maybe do a commendation or something, Matt, for those people because, you know, we, we forget all the good things when there's one that goes a little bit sour. But, I mean, hearing from the horse and mouth, and Hardin um, owns several dealerships in the whole county, and to, to have them say that, you know, the sole reason they're here, the Kia dealership is here, is because of our people. Uh, that's what it's all about. I mean, to us, that's what we expect of everybody. It doesn't happen all the time with everybody else, but we expect it with our people, and um, they, should be, they should be commended for it. And I think that's about it. So we're going to uh, adjourn the meeting in memory of uh, Jan Dunn, a longtime Garden Grove resident who passed away. And the next regular meeting will be Tuesday, September 14th, 2010 at 530 in Chambers. Thank you.